Erling Haaland is inevitable. He has scored 18 goals so far in the league, and this season only three teams in the Premier League have stopped him from scoring. That is Bournemouth, Liverpool, and Brentford. So here's Erling Haaland in Manchester City's 4-3-3. Erling Haaland won't be playing in the World Cup this time around, but if you want to catch all of our World Cup coverage, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification button below me on the screen, and you'll get everything as it drops into our channel straight into your feed. So how do you stop Erling Haaland from scoring? Well, I'm going to suggest two different ways that you can do that. And the first way I'm going to suggest is by being a little bit lucky. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. So in the game against Liverpool, Erling Haaland did not score. But this season, he scored 18 goals from 11 expected goals. That means that all it takes for Erling Haaland to score a goal is around 0.6 expected goals. And in this game against Liverpool, he put up around 0.5 expected goals, depending on which model you're using. And so that suggests that Actually, Liverpool were a little bit lucky to not concede a goal from him. Now, this needs contextualising a little bit because both of these sides are elite sides in England. They both hope to be in the Champions League spots by the end of the season. And that means they are going to play very proactive styles. They're going to try and score goals the way that they like to score goals. They're not going to sit in and be too defensive. But this was a game which did suit Liverpool because they knew they could hit Man City on the break because Man City wouldn't sit too deep. And so what they did was they basically gambled on being able to score more, generate more chances than their counterparts and that was actually what happened but in so doing they did give away a few chances which on another day Erling Haaland might have scored so I've got a few of these just on the board in front of me so we can have a look at them so the first of these is one of the bread and butter chances that Erling Haaland loves to get onto so here he is between the two centre backs Gomez and Van Dijk he's going to make this run between the two of them Gundogan is going to play the ball around and then he ends up in this situation which is not a huge goal scoring opportunity but Allison is off his line, he has plenty of time to maybe even chip the ball over. He's an elite player, sometimes he will score those. And then there's two headers that you might normally expect him to do better from. This first one comes in quite high and you might expect him to loop it over. This second one comes in and he's got plenty of power on it, hits it down straight at Allison. But again, you wouldn't be surprised if that one goes in. And then one final chance at the end of the game, which doesn't actually result in a chance, but is very dangerous. We can see here the ball comes into the back post, headed back across, and it's only quick thinking by Virgil van Dijk here that allows him to head the ball away. If not, Erling Haaland probably scores this. And so the way that you defend in these kind of games is that you accept the gamble that you might give up chances, but you hope that your elite defenders are going to do a really good job of closing them down. And this shows up really nicely on the shot map from The Analyst by Opta. These are all the chances that Manchester City have created. And you can see these chances around the six yard box here are actually quite dangerous when you have a striker like Erling Haaland. So one way of stopping Erling Haaland from scoring is having elite defenders and having a little bit of luck as well. But not every team can enjoy this sort of thing. Thing. So there's a second way that you can cause problems for Erling Haaland. So this is the Brentford team as they set up in their 2-1 win against Manchester City. The important things to notice are these. There is a back three here and then there is a midfield three here. Very narrow midfield three and a back three. And both of these things allowed Brentford to cause problems to Manchester City and in particular Erling Haaland. This is because Erling Haaland is obviously a striker. And what this means is that you've got two centre-backs who can always track him regardless of which side he comes in. So if the ball's coming on from this side, he can get in between these two and you've got two centre-backs on him. If the ball comes in from the other side, again, you've got the centre centre-back and then the outside centre-back able to cover him. So you've got double coverage on Erling Haaland. Even if you get caught out in transition, if one of these centre-backs is away, you've still got two centre-backs who can cover him. And then the other thing that Brentford did was they have this midfield three that stay very narrow. They clog up the midfield. They make it very congested. And this causes problems because a lot of creativity for Manchester City comes through the middle. Kevin De Bruyne, obviously, in this half space, generates huge amounts of goals for Erling Haaland. So if you can make sure that you're keeping someone in this sort of area to mean that he hasn't got as much time and space to make those crosses, then you're onto a winner. But the other thing is, is that you can also go fairly easily player for player. You can track each of these centre midfielders around, make sure they don't have a huge amount of time. And then one final thing is that a lot of the creativity that Manchester City are wanting to generate is going to come through passes in these sorts of areas, through the central spaces, into Holland, into these wider players who can come inside as well. And if you have a really narrow midfield here, you can cut a lot of those passes out as well. So there's two things that are happening here. On the one hand, you're stopping Holland from having a huge amount of space in the box and on the other hand you're closing down the midfield areas and stopping the ball at source stopping it from getting into Holland as well and this worked out really nicely 
for Brentford in this game. So I've just got a screenshot here to show you what this looks like in practice. So this is Brentford's 5-3-2. Notice how narrow this midfield three are. Here's the two centre-backs on Erling Haaland here. If he was coming from the other side, he would have these two centre-backs on him as well. So they've got good coverage of Haaland. And you can see here Matthias Jensen coming across to stop John Stones from playing the ball in here. So you can see both of those things there. Coverage of Haaland and then stopping the ball from coming in in this area. But that doesn't mean that Brentford just sat back and invited pressure on. They actually got fairly high up the field. So let's have a look at another sequence of play here on the board. So this is the Brentford sequence of play. You can see one of the strikers here, one of the strikers here, and then the midfield three are all in the opposition half. So they are pushing up. They are trying to cause problems for Manchester City, but they are aware of the fact that Manchester City can attack at speed. And that's what actually ends up happening. The ball comes through to Kevin De Bruyne, who is a really good transition player. But because Brentford have overloaded in the central areas, what they end up doing is forcing the ball out wide, as we said, and it means that they get the ball into this sort of area but it's a wide area and so by the time they get the ball into the box you can see that there's double coverage here from one of the centre backs on Holland, the other centre back on the ball as well. So the structure is set up so that they can get forward, they can cause problems in the opposition half but if the ball is turned over and there is a counter attack they funnel the ball wide and they make sure they've got good coverage in the middle. And this shows up really nicely in the shot map from the game. You can see here, these are all the chances that Manchester City have generated. There's a lot of them, but there's a lot outside the box. And when it comes to this six yard box area, very little indeed generated by Man City, just the one big chance there. And most importantly, Erling Haaland only picked up 0.03 expected goals in the game. So Erling Haaland is inevitable, but he is not unstoppable. And if more teams adopt the sort of tactical approach that Brentford have, then we might have a much more open title race this season. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic brings you the best sports journalism in the world in a personalised experience, connecting you with the stories and teams that you care about the most. There's coverage of 13 sports, plus direct access to world-class journalists through live Q&As, discussions and podcasts. And you can try it now for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.